Hello everybody, it's your boy Hawker, the Counter-Strike Scholar, and I'm back to have a look at Heroic's recent rise to form with this new roster. Firstly, thanks for all the love on that recent ROPS video, I was really happy with how that one turned out, and I'm glad to see the reception on that video was good. And secondly, sorry for not uploading in a while, I've been caught up casting at some of the dream hacks, but hopefully I should be back now to keep on making videos. Oh, and before we get into the video, I'm trying to see if I can hit 100k subs by the end of the year. So if you do enjoy the videos, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, see if you can help me out, and let's get into it. We're going to start with this pistol round where we get to have a look at the two new additions to the roster. Refresh ends up getting a nice quick kill from under Palace before getting traded out. But it's really Shush that I want to look at on this round because I think he's been underrated for a while and I really like what he's brought to this team. He starts by holding ramp and getting a kill to begin with, but then as the complexity players start to approach from mid, he uses the attention that's been drawn towards refresh and the fact that there's a smoke towards jungle to his benefit, and this allows him to get a kill pretty much just pre-aiming the stairs angle, because that's the only angle he really needs to be concerned about. Then at this point, he makes sure not to overextend now that Heroic have such a big advantage. And even though Tesses ends up missing a bunch of shots over from short where he could have denied the bomb, it ends up working out fine for Heroic because Stown arrives at CT. Shush makes sure to wait for his teammate to have his back here so they can fight together, but he ends up getting the kill himself anyway. And then they end up having utility and enough team play to clear out JKS at the end tier. Nice start to the game, but there's plenty more exciting stuff to dive into. This first gun round is, I think, the best example of why Heroic have been so fun to watch lately. They have been incredibly dynamic and varied with their CT setups, and they're also taking a lot of big risks on some of their CT setups that you just don't see anywhere near as often from other teams. And especially when you're on your opponent's map pick, like they are here, I think these plays can have a lot of merit. This round starts with Heroic having 3B, two players boosted up early, and because they're up in the apartment so quickly, Rush isn't ready for them, and he ends up getting double teamed. But then from here, Heroic realize Rush is always the man holding B on the complexity default, and they need to make sure they don't get run over on the A side of the map. So they very quickly shift their setup to have three CTs ready towards the A site as soon as possible after putting this deep smoke into B apartments to maintain that control. Then they even have the small minute details of switching out this rifle away from Refresh who's low on health into the hands of the higher health player to give the rifle the best possible chance of winning fights. From here, Heroic fall back into a more default setup, but they also have more information they want to take. Tesses now flashes Cadian into ramp for even more information, and once he doesn't spot anyone towards ramp, and doesn't even hear any shots being fired from potentially blinded players, he decides to go back and push Palace, thinking that it's fairly likely this A side of the map is clear. This is definitely a slight risk, but one that's probably okay to take with this MP9. By this point, Complexity have thrown down a deep connector smoke, and Tesses, who's playing around jungle, can hear the steps of those players in connector. So Stown, who's playing on short, and Shush, who's playing on CT, try to combine their nades into connector to see if they can get some damage or a kill. And looking at it from the overview, if Stown's nade was slightly closer to connector, I think these nades probably line up to get a kill, and I love it when teams throw these two nades into con. They can be very powerful. Then Tesses spots some players on short moving to B, but he doesn't overfight from this position because he knows his B players, taking the earlier control in the round, didn't have to use too many nades while doing so. Because they were both boosted up, they didn't have to expend their utility, so Refresh still has some nades to be able to help slow down this push and set up Stown for one of these early kills. And from here, Refresh is in another good position to clear out the players from the apartments, and everything goes according to plan. I mean, this is one of those rounds that shows you just how many small details go into a round of Counter-Strike that you cannot keep track of in the real time. But there was so much across the map that Heroic did here, and all of it was incredibly well-timed and just 
fit together so damn well, like a goddamn Danish jigsaw puzzle. These are the rounds that get me so excited about Counter-Strike, as you can probably tell by me talking about it for like three minutes straight, so probably time to move on now. One of the things you'll notice about Heroic's unique CT style of taking a lot of gambles is that their solo site players have to be very good at surviving and buying time for rotates. For example, in this round, Shush is playing solo A and Kadian gets a kill towards mid early in the round, but Shush is making sure he plays in CT spawn so that his teammates can come assist him on the A site because he knows if he plays more committed early in the round and falls on A, there could actually be a risk of letting this round slip away quite quickly. Eventually, Shush gets a kill from CT, but you also get to see the other aspects that Heroic are good at, and that is these fast, dynamic rotations away from mid, quickly over to the A site. Kadian ends up getting a couple of kills, and Stown arrives at CT spawn to help Shush out. So these are two concepts you definitely want to watch out for for Heroic in the future. Round six is a great example of why these dynamic setups can be so effective for Heroic. Even when the aggression goes wrong, like it does here with Shush falling early on this attempted palace push, Heroic still have ways to get back into the round. Heroic let the time run down slightly before throwing this similar flash from Stown to flash peak refresh into ramp this time to try and get some info. And then Stown goes back to cover off mid. But most importantly, Kadian is so active across the map with his AWP that Complexity can't predict where he's playing from. So here, as they go into the B bomb site, they are not accounting for the fact that an AWP could be here. You can see by the way they use the nades they have so loosely on the site, and the way the flash is just kind of thrown up on top of the site more than anything, that they're not expecting an AWP to be holding this angle. Otherwise, they'd use the rest of their utility to cut this player off of the B bomb site. But because Kadian has the AWP here, it is so much easier for him to deal with this contact play. And against teams who aren't as dynamic with their setups, Complexity are likely to just run into a rifler on the B site here and overrun him. But instead, the AWP is in position and it ends up being a much easier hold against the attempted contact play. You get to see more of those switch ups in round 9 where Kadian decides to peak Palace early in this round and he gets the early fight that he was looking for, gets a great shot to begin with. But the majority of the success in this round for Heroic comes down to the counter utility timing. Complexity try and run an A play, however a molly lands on ramp alongside this nade from Stown which does whopping damage. But most importantly, the molly slows them down significantly. Shush goes one for one on the site. But at this point, Rush isn't comfortable trying to get the bomb down because he knows so much time from their execute has already been bought by Heroic with their counter util. So Rush feels like he has to make a desperation play to get some map control so that they have a better chance of getting that bomb down. And while he does get a kill in towards CT spawn, he leaves the bomb behind out in the open. And now that Complexity have no nades left, this is easy pickings for the secondary sniper of Stown, who is locked in on this angle. And these easy fights at the end of the round all come from that counter utility timing earlier, which disjointed Complexity and didn't allow them to follow up on their prior nades. In this one, we see another active round for Heroic, even when they go down into a 4v5. Stown gets picked at mid early, but he sees that Complexity are putting quite a lot of emphasis onto this position early in this round, and this is something Complexity do pretty often in general. And Heroic's response is one I don't think a lot of teams would go for, but they stack three players towards the B side of the map and start to fight for apartments control. Tess gets spotted somewhat early on into this, but Refresh is there to back him up with a smoke, and then Heroic decide to push deep into B Apartments off the back of this smoke. They don't just take B Apartments control though. While this is happening, Shush is also pushing into A Ramp, so it's quite clear that Heroic have just decided to take a risk being down in a 4v5, and they're assuming that Complexity are going to run this play mainly through mid, which is a fair assessment. They worked hard on mid control to begin with, so getting B Apartments control and ramp control gives you all the information you need to realize this is going to be a play fully through mid. 
And once the push starts coming into the A site, Shush does his job really well. Just gets one kill from the ramp, stays alive in this position because he knows that his teammates are about to arrive on the rotation and we get all four CTs on the A site in an instant, in a flash. Refresh flanks from connector. You get all sorts of players rotating over to A. And even though complexity went a man up and gained a lot of ground towards the A site, they were never able to get full control of it. And Heroic were the ones that somehow managed to get back control of this round thanks to some really well-timed aggression. The final thing I want to show you is the potential drawback of this style that Heroic are playing and what teams might do to try and counter them in the future. In this round, we get yet another different setup from Heroic, this time having two players pushing through underpass, and eventually, Stown is going to get this kill onto an unsuspecting Poison who is looking for a pick. But while this is happening, Shush just straight up dies on the A site. And this isn't even really his fault, this is just a great shot from Config, but it goes to show how brittle these holds can be when you take these aggressive plays on the other side of the map, and your opponents are quickly ready to pounce over on the opposite side that you've pushed to. Shush was solo holding A, and even though he was playing pretty safe at spawn, he wasn't able to delay things, he wasn't able to get a kill on the bomb site, and so Heroic just have to concede all this control and try and play in a 4v4 retake. Now this could maybe be doable, but then the second player who was initially over towards A, Refresh, also gets caught, this time with a flash into connector while he starts reloading. This was just well-timed by complexity, but at this point, even though Heroic could go for this round if they wanted to with their utility, they realize that they can probably just pick better spots. So I love some of the stuff that Heroic are doing, but they really have to rely heavily on some of these solo site players. And while I generally think Shush is a really solid player, really consistent, really safe pair of hands, he's not always going to be able to solo defend a bomb site for you. So that's us done for the video. I love how Heroic are pioneering some of these riskier setups, which I think are really viable in the current climate where you need to focus on your CT economy quite a lot. And it also helps that Heroic get these risky strats right way more often than they should. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time.